This video is a brief introduction to using storyboards in your Oxygen Nougat development. There are three basic ways which you can defy your user interface. The first way is through code. So even if you start with an empty project here, you could define your user interface via code in order to create the user interface. The other way is through zip-based view controllers. A zip-based view controller is a single file per view. And then that file is edited with Interface Builder. So if you have three views in your application, and you're using zip based view controllers for all three, you would have three zip files in your application. The newest way is storyboards. Storyboards is a single file that combines all of the views together. So instead of having three zip files like you would with the zip files, instead you have a single storyboard file that contains all the views. The advantage of storyboards is that it also includes the way the user moves between views within the storyboard. So this makes it much easier to map out the user experience for more complex applications. I've also talked to developers that have found that it's much easier to maintain storyboards in source control and work with other developers. Let's go ahead and take a look at storyboards in action. I selected the utility app here because it's one of the templates that contains a storyboard. This new dialog pops up and asks me which Crossbox server and device I want to connect to. And there we go, our template is created in Visual Studio. In the utility app, there are two view controllers. The main view controller is the view controller for the main view the user sees when they first go into the application. And then there's a information button they can tap and that will take them to the flip side view. And the flip side view controller is what controls that view. Now, if we look under resources here, we'll see two different storyboards. Now, this is because it's a universal application. So each of these storyboards contains the two views, one for main and one for flip side. Let's go ahead and run this application and see it in action. There we go, it's deployed to our simulator and running. So I can tap the information button here and it flips over to the flip side view. Hit done, and it goes back again. So let's take a look at how we edit storyboards in Interface Builder. So I'm gonna open up my app here and go into the resources folder and open the iPhone storyboard. So here are two views in our storyboard, the main view, view, view controller and the flip side view controller. This arrow here that kind of fades in indicates that this is the default view that the user will see when they come into the application. You can change that and move it to a different view in your storyboard if you'd like. This represents what's called a segue. A segue is a user moving from one view to another view. Now watch this in information button here when I tap on the segue. See how it got highlighted? That highlighting indicates that the segue is attached to the interface button. So there's no code written to say, when the user taps on this, activate this view. Instead, it's defined through the interface builder. If we click over here, we can see the properties for the segue. It shows the style is being modal, and the transition is being flipped horizontal, which is what we saw there. One comment about styles is the push style is only used if you are using the navigation controller containing other views. So in this case, we're not using a navigation controller, so we need to use modal style. Let's go ahead and add some more views here. So we'll zoom out and I'll add one view and a second view. Space them out a little bit more. And we'll add some buttons so that the user can navigate between views. So I'll just go ahead and put a button here. Call it next. And we'll put another button over here. And I'll put it down in the corner here. I'm gonna call it peak. And that's because I'm gonna use the page curl peak. And then on this, I'm gonna use the segment and control just so you can see how you interact with controls that are behind the page curl. So now we need to wire up the user experience here. 
So in order to do that, all I have to do is use the secondary click, which is control click or two fingers or right mouse button, two fingers on the trackpad, and you drag to the view controller you want it to go to. So I can drag to either one, and it highlights that view controller as being where the user will go when they touch that button. And it pops up and asks me what kind of segue I want to have. Remember, we were going to use modal, and there we go. It's created the segue. Now I can select this, and come over here and change the transition, and I'm going to go with cover vertical, which will bring the view up from the bottom. And now on this one, we're going to use the modal and partial curl, which I think looks really cool. So there you go. We've made the changes to add the additional views here and the segues between them. So now I'm going to go ahead and save this, which is Command S, and go back to Visual Studio. And all I'm going to do here is just launch it again. And go back to the simulator. There's our app launched. We're just going to tap the information button. And there is our next button, which as we touch that, we see the next view comes up from the bottom like we told it to. And then when I tap peak, it does the cool page curl. And we can interact with this view down here and other views that would be here. But then if we were to tap back up here, it goes back to the previous view. Now you may notice there is no way to return from this view to the original flip side view. Now I'll point out that if we were using the navigation view controller, then in the push segue, then we would have the bar up at the top with the button and the arrow that they could tap to go back, which you're probably familiar with in a lot of iOS applications. But since we're not using that, we're going to add a view controller to make this transition to go backwards. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back into Visual Studio and we're going to add to our project a new view controller. So we go new item, go down here to iOS, and we're just going to select a UI view controller and hit add. So in here to do this, we just need to add a method. And we'll call it go back. And we need to give the method the proper signature, which is sender of type ID. And also we need to use an attribute to tell the tell oxygen that this is available through the storyboard. And that attribute is IB action. And that says this is an action, so make it available to the storyboard. So we're going to go ahead and use class completion here and implement this. And we just need a single line here that's called dismiss view controller animated. And we're going to say true or yes for animated, which is equivalent to true. And then for completion, that gives us an option for a callback where we could do something when the animation finishes. In this case, we don't care, so we're just going to say nil. Now all we have to do is come over here and right click on the storyboard. It says stink storyboard. And so that's going to take this go back method because it's decorated with IB action and put it into the storyboard so we can then interact with that through interface builder. And now we save everything and we come over here to interface builder and we're going to add a new button down. So now this button is our go back button. Go back. Now in order for our view to know which view controller we're using, we have to tell it. Now if we click over here on this view and come over here, we'll see it is using the flip side view controller, which we saw in our Visual Studio project. If we click on this view here, we'll see it doesn't have a custom class defined. So we just simply tell it we, what class we want to use and we say view controller one. And that has associated that new class we added, the view controller, to this view. And so now we can drag using a secondary mouse click to the view controller and we release. And look at that, sent events go back. That's the one we just defined. So we select that and that's all we have to do. So now I'm going to save this, come back over here to Visual Studio and we run our application. Go back into the simulator and wait for it to launch. There it is.
So we tap the I, come in here, here's our next button. There's our go back button. We tap that and it goes back again. Storyboards are a great way to define your user interface, especially in complex applications. Hopefully this is enough information for you to look forward to and start using storyboards in your Oxygen Nougat's applications right away to define your user interface and user experience in iPhone and iPad applications.